And this is an example of a cut. MAC addresses are fantastic, but they've got some real limitations to them. If we take a look at our little network model that I have here, we'll remember that every computer has a unique MAC address for its network card. That's fantastic. But there's some problems with it. Problem number one is that as you add more and more computers, because of the nature of a broadcast domain, you end up getting so much broadcasting that nobody can get anything else done. So that's problem number one. The second problem is, is that MAC addresses don't identify in any way that these computers are all part of a single local area network. That's not what MAC addresses do. I mean, they come from original equipment manufacturers, and so they're very fixed and static. And as a result of that, if you want to start getting bigger networks, we have to, now I'm not saying we get rid of MAC addresses, we still use them, but in order to make a big network work, we have to add a new type of addressing called logical addressing. Logical addressing comes in a number of different forms, but the overwhelming predominant version of logical addressing used today is called IP addressing. And here, let's put up an IP address. Now, who hasn't seen an IP address like this at one time or another? The idea behind IP addresses is that unlike MAC addresses, they're not fixed with a network card. You can apply an IP address to a network card. In fact, uh, you usually have to in one way or another go into Windows or Linux or Mac or whatever it is and say, my IP address is such and so. So IP addresses can actually be used to identify a particular network. So for example, if we bring this example back up, if you take a look at on this one, on the first three numbers, all of the computers on this network will have these three numbers applied as the first three values. The fourth value will be different for every individual computer. Now if I have another network come up, well this network will have a different what we call network ID that shows all the computers on this network are a member of a particular broadcast domain. So now, if we have all of these IP addresses as well as MAC addresses, how do they all tie together? Well, to do that, we use something called a router. Now, what I have right here is a very typical home router. Keep in mind that routers are going to have two connections or more. So in this case, this router actually has only two connections. There's one connection here, but the other connection is hardwired to a four port switch. So this really isn't just a router. This is both a router and a switch. Let me show you how all this works. So this little triangle is going to be a router. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a cable from the router, just like this, and I'm gonna plug it into a switch. See how easy this is? There we go. So what I've done here is I've actually connected my switch directly to my router. That's one of the reasons why we see so many home routers with a built-in switch. It's because we're invariably plugging our local area connection into a router. Now, if I want to connect this guy to anybody else, I'll use the other connection. This is going to get messy. I can do this, though. And in this case, I can actually connect two networks together via a router. So what will take place is that if one of these computers on this side wants to talk to one of these computers on this side, they actually change the frame to include the IP address of the computer that they want to talk to. So in order to see how all this works, let me go ahead and grab some blocks and let's do our frame one more time, but this time we're going to add a little IP information. To appreciate the power of IP addressing, let's go through a fairly simplistic example where we have two networks that are interconnected by a single router. So what I have is one network and another network and they're interconnected through this triangle which is my router. Now what I want to do is that this computer right here, he wants to talk to this computer over here on the other network. Now in order to do that, we have to go through some fairly complex steps. Now, based on what we've learned before, what we have is a MAC address destination, a MAC address source, data, and a CRC. But what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of extra information. 
what we're putting in is the IP address of this computer right here. This is the destination IP address, as well as the source IP address, which is the IP address of the sending system. So we have something that looks kind of like this. Now, what's happened here is that we've got more than a, this is all a frame, but within the frame is something that we call an IP packet. So packets sit within frames. Now, what we want to do is go ahead and send this packet to the correct party. So to do that, your computer right here is going to look at that IP address and he's going to realize that it's not part of his network. When that happens, built into every computer in the universe, at least everyone that's on the internet, is something called a default gateway. The default gateway is invariably the connection to your router itself. So what will happen is that your computer will go ahead and put a frame around this IP packet and on this frame, it's going to have the destination MAC address of the router as well as the source MAC address of the computer itself. So this big old long frame gets sent through the network into the switch. The switch sends it to the router. Now, once it gets into the router, the router strips away all of the frame stuff, leaving just the IP packet. Built into every router in the universe is something called a routing table. The routing table tells, based on whatever the network information is, where to send data. So in this case, because it's a very simple network, it knows basically just to send it out on the other side. So in order to send it, your router will go ahead and get the MAC address of this computer, and he'll go ahead, put the MAC address of the receiving computer as well as his MAC address, and then put the entire frame together, off the frame goes, and into this guy here. Keep in mind that packets do not travel by themselves. They're always encapsulated within a frame of some type or another. But the important thing to appreciate is that while the frame itself changed a number of times, the IP packets never change. And that's important because IP packets don't really care about what kind of cabling or anything you use. They always get the data there. So this is a fairly simplistic idea of how we use IP addressing in our networking world. Keep in mind it's routers that look at IP addresses to send data to the proper networks. And also keep in mind that IP packets always sit within frames.